And what I'm going to ask you to do is to make a group mind map. So probably on this one you're going to need two branches of the mind map. One for arguments against making an apology and one for arguments for making an apology. And then just to apologise to their fans. Uh, I don't what about yeah. apology yeah. like this is a futile yeah. gesture yeah. politics yeah. and a navel gazing yeah. distraction. So this is who's saying this? This is Professor A. C. Graham, who's a philosopher. A futile gesture. Uh, futile means it's pointless. It's just, uh, it would be pointless, yeah. Um, and you say there's much more important issues um, like slavery today. I'm not worrying about slavery in the past. And that maybe, you know, it's unrecognised, unheeded. So I think his point is that we need to think about slavery today. And, you know, you get these stories about kids working in sweatshops and things like that. In the far east. What about London? We yes. We haven't mentioned London yet. What happened? Is London for an apology or against it, from what you've read? Uh, for an apology. For an apology. Great. So would you write that on, please, on the floor? Alongside the Liverpool. Okay, later. Thanks. Why, why have these two cities already apologised? What made them do it? What made them do it? Is there anything on your sheet that's against people apologising? Oh, it made them angry and upset. <laughs> What's that, sorry? It made them angry and upset. It made who angry and upset? The, the people the pe the more against racism people. people. The people of Bristol? Yeah. Now, why were they angry and upset? So that, that's clear they don't want to apologise, but what's the reason? Because it wasn't anything to do with them before. Because it was the generation before them. Excellent. Right, it wasn't anything to do with them, it was the generation before them, so there's a reason not to apologise. You can't put that on the against. So it wasn't to do with that generation, it was the generation before them. Civil War. What happens during the American Civil War? 1861 to 64. Yeah, a lot or a little or how much are we talking? 50,000 pounds. 60,000. Yeah, 50,000 pounds less than before. Okay. So how did that affect Manchester then? What sort of? You know, is this a big problem? Is this something that people wouldn't notice? Very, very it's a very big thing. It's being imported from other places, so it was yeah. like, get it. Well, really, it's not really that big because there's still some cotton being imported from somewhere else, so it's not really that big. Yeah, but America was a big country, probably taking a long way to get there as well. So it wasn't that there was no cotton coming in at all, okay? They had to get the cotton from somewhere else. Where else do you think they got the cotton from if they couldn't get it from America? Some was from Africa. The Caribbean was pretty much off limits, but they got some from the Caribbean. Some from South America and some from somewhere else we haven't mentioned yet. No. Nope. It's another hot country. India. India, well done. Absolutely, okay. Lots of it came from India. Okay, so they had to go out and find cotton from other places. What do you think may have been the problem with that cotton? It's not as good. It takes longer to get there, and it might be dear because it might have slaves. It, it might have slaves. Oh, might pay. Excellent. Okay, most of the cotton grown in India. Not that the people there were living fantastically brilliant lives, but they weren't slaves. Okay, so maybe that cotton was more expensive. If it's more expensive, what does that mean? Go on. Excellent. The people are making less money. If people are making less money. Better jobs. Okay. You look at the, so, the, the presidents of the America, uh, or the early presidents of America, George Washington, he owned slaves. Thomas Jefferson, he owned slaves. Yeah. Madison, he owned slaves. When they talk about all men are created equal in the Declaration of Independence of 1776, when they talk about all men are created equal, they mean men. They don't mean women <coughs> and they don't mean black people. Okay, so that's, yeah. So, so yeah. I was basically saying it took till, what, 1962 yeah. with President Kennedy and then the Martin Luther King thing. Yeah, uh, yeah the African-Americans, African Black-Americans didn't really get 
full voting rights and their full civil rights till the 1960s. And that's the legacy of slavery. So it's like they were one of the biggest contributors, but they've still not apologised yet. So they're also benefited because they live in a beautiful, a beautiful city, don't they? Beautiful grace territory. The the houses are fabulous. They all live in these fabulous houses because of the slave trade. That's a reason to apologise. It's probably not. um, It's probably not too late to apologise because, um, like, maybe because of all the slave trade that's happened all them years ago, maybe that's resulted to Africa being so poor now. Yeah. <coughs> Actually, yeah, yeah because no, they didn't get slaves didn't get paid anything doing their jobs. So they couldn't get any money into their country. Money. Couldn't get any money, so that's why they're poor now and we're trying to help them, but if we helped them all those years ago, we won't be trying severely to help them from going to... From, from, no, from, from starvation yeah, now. So maybe we, maybe don't need to apologise to them because maybe oh, yeah. in a way we already are apologising. What do you think about that? Yeah, we're apologising because we're giving them what we're trying, trying to give charity. them what they need now. And it was their fault. Charity. Yeah, you can't throw it. And live aid. Yeah, 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 so we helped them with that as well, didn't we? Yeah, but then you can argue that we're not helping them enough. Yeah, because they were trading with that. The owners will make a profit because they have cheap labour, so when the products are sold, they'll have money over from what they pay the workers. No. And I can shoot cheap. They're definitely not, are they? No. But the people who produce them are not paid very high wages. So it's a form of a slavery, a hierarchy, right. They're not in chains anymore. But they're certainly not be they're certainly not reaping the rewards of their labour, are they? They're not being paid good quality wages so that they can have a good quality life. What other kind of slavery is there today? It's mostly manufacturing, isn't it? I mean a lot of people in um, around um, Bolton, Berry. In the northern towns that used to produce cotton, they still manufacture uh, garments, clothes. And a lot of the women actually take work into the home. They have home-based industries. A big manufacturer, say, cuts out hundreds and hundreds of gloves, just the material, so, and then they have to be stitched. And those gloves are sewn in the house particularly by Indian women and they have a sewing machine and they sew all day the gloves together so that they keep an eye on the young children they can pop they can take the older children to school and collect them back and they can still cook in the house but they sew every minute of the day to sew those gloves and they probably get you something like 5p a glove it still goes up so you can imagine how many gloves you've got to sew in a week if you're only getting 5p for every glove that you, sell, that, that you sew. And imagine how much stitching there is on a, on a glove. Twice on each hand. Pair, pair of gloves, 10p. Slave labour, isn't it?